place to start your morning. Fergie apologized for her national anthem performance at the All-Star Game. She said it didn't strike the intended notes, but added she did try her best. Nick, did Fergie really owe us an apology? Yes! Of course she owed us an apology, and now that I've seen some behind-the-scenes footage of her rehearsal, she should have known that her Marilyn Monroe rendition was not going to strike the intended tone. Now, I am not a person that claims to be able to sing, but I know that, so I do not try to sing. Fergie is someone that does claim to be able to sing, so you need to either do better, or if you know you can't be, this is a tough song to sing now, then you got to do the standard approach. So you're doing that little, that whispery, raspy, adding stanzas, not into it. Yes, she owed us an apology. The country, actually, on President's Day, no less. I got a full disclosure. I'm not really off into Fergie like that, so even her trying to be sexy, I was on the wrong channel for all that, like, for real. And I saw it, it started before the mic even opened. Like, her walk up, I was like, where does she think she going? Like, does she know that this is the NBA All-Star game? So, she should have followed by. That was offensive. That was, I mean... Following Kevin Hart, that was bad too. That she should have followed. Yeah, well, Kevin Hart. If you want to impress me, though, Fergie, get the money back. Get, oh. Yeah, we'll see how sorry you are. I don't think that's happening to the NFL. Teddy Bridgewater did not complete a pass in 2017, but the QB said last year was his favorite season by far. CC, what does the future hold for Bridgewater? Man, those are powerful words. Seeing that he did recovery and made a full recovery from that horrific injury, it lets you know how being a quarterback in the NFL and being a player and being out there, he had tears in his eyes when he took the field, uh, once he came back from the injury. So he looks forward to coming back and finally playing. This year was more of a full recovery year. Now emotionally he can move on and trying to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. All right, the, I think he's going to be with the Vikings next year. I don't know if he's going to be a starter or not, so I want to make sure I answer your question. But I yes. want to ask you this, Chris. That is an unbelievable comment, that it was his last year was his favorite year, and you believe it. What is? How can that be true? Is it because he was, it, does that mean there was a point in time he wondered, will I ever be able to put this uniform on again? I'm sure he questioned on that day, and a lot of people within the Vikings, they questioned if he ever be a quarterback again, let alone trying to walk. Because the first thing they tried to do was to save his leg. If they didn't have Sugar there, the trainer, who knew the procedure to do what the, the right protocol, man, he could have lost his leg. So, yes, going onto the field and being in the Vikings uniform because this team and this franchise, they didn't give up on him. So, yes, I can understand why this was the best year. Powerful. So. It looks like the Eagles might get an offensive coordinator after all. Philly will be interviewing running back coach Deuce Staley and wide receivers coach Matt Grove for the position. CC, is it the right approach to fill this position internally? Yeah, I think that when you look at the lateness for which they lost yeah. their coordinator, there's only a few things that you can do. Don't overreact and go out and bring someone into your system or you have to retrain because Doug himself is the offensive coordinator. He calls the play, so the need, there's not a need to be in a rush, but I know Duke Staley. He is ready to be a coordinator after being a former player. I do know Mike Groh, former wide receiver coach, not only in Chicago Bears, but before that, where'd he come from? Alabama, mentor by by Nick Saban, also coached my son at Alabama. So he is a quality guy, ready to be an offensive coordinator. So he's got two good choices and guys who both have very, very strong pedigree. All right, first of all, Deuce Staley entering the coaching ranks, make, I don't feel this very often, made me feel old. I remember Deuce Staley as part of a one-two punch in yes. Philadelphia as a running back along with mm -hmm. Ryan Westbrook, and all of a sudden he's joining the coaching ranks. But as far as this goes, what you, I would use the analogous situation, defensive coordinator in C. Seattle. Pete Carroll is really in charge of that defense, and so when they've had turnover, they've been able to promote from within. That yes. is the most recent Chris Richard, maybe that one didn't work out, but in the past it has. When Doug Peterson is really your de facto offensive mind, yes, no doubt. promoting from within to make sure you keep the established system in place, an established system that got the best football, obviously, out of Carson Wentz, but also some great football out of Nick Foles. You don't want to change that at all. Yes. That'd be true even if they hadn't won the Super Bowl. All right, speaking of Nick Foles, finally, people have brought up the possibility of trading Foles after his playoff performance. Former NFL GM Bill Polian says the Eagles should ask for two first round and two second round picks for the Super Bowl MVP. Nick, is this too high of a price for Nick Foles? That's the that's the price I said they should ask for Wentz. And you said we're not even, that's a ridiculous discussion, that's fine. But I said that if they wanted to stick with the Super Bowl MVP, Carson, or Nick Foles, and you want to trade the potential league MVP, Carson Wentz, two firsts and two seconds would be the starting conversation. 
I think teams will call about Nick Foles, and I think they will offer initially one second-round pick. And I think the Philadelphia Eagles will say no. I think Philadelphia won't even start. I think Philadelphia will start to have the conversation internally once Wentz is healthy if someone offers a first-round pick. But, yes, two firsts and two seconds. I mean, that's essentially the RG3 trade. And I understand that trade didn't work out, but at the time, people were like, yeah, like that's, you know, look at how much they paid to go get that guy. That is, I, with respect to Hall of Famer Bill Polian, I don't know that, it's hard for me to believe that he could believe that. That you had to start with two for by that logic, that means if a team called Philly today and said, we'll give you two first round picks, they would say, no, we're not doing it. That's crazy. Yeah, I think that he was trying to make the point of, I'm not really going to pick up the phone unless they just offer me something ridiculous because that's ridiculous. No one is going to make that type of offer to you. And it's just amazing to me how everyone tries to break up the champ because it's the same way we were with New England last year. Oh, they got Garoppolo there. Garoppolo needs to demand his way out of there. Like, he only has so much control. He had one more year on his contract. What's he going to do? Go into Belichick's office and strong arm him? Yeah, how would that work out for anybody else? Like, it's not going to. Nick Foles needs to sit there right where he is. Like, Nick Foles almost quit playing football. Did we forget? So what team is going to say, you know something? I'm going to give you a couple years of my draft for a guy that I don't know how much longer he wants to play football. Like, I know he loved last season, but he's given me an indicator that he's not madly in love with this game of football. So, no, there's no way I would commit that type of resources, those type of resources, for Nick Foles going forward. But the, the other thing is, like, if we can just set the polling comments aside as far as the discussion around should Philadelphia trade Foles for something, if it once wins is healthy, get something for Foles, a point that you've made that I find interesting and that there are a few things that irk my partner Chris Carter more than people telling pro athletes what they should do with their career. Gronk, you know what? Maybe you should retire. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nick Foles. Oh, go, definitely going go to another profession or going to a different location. The same way everyone else in America wakes up in the morning and says, you know something? I'm just trying to think of how I can get out of my job or how I can get to a different company. But we're just so much more cavalier with other people's career. Like, like just so much more, more so than with our own. Right. Like, you, the point that you made, we were, uh, we were walking out of this building to our office across next door. And the point you made to me was Nick Foles never been happier as a football player than he is right now. He's in a place where he's comfortable. He's with a coaching staff that he's comfortable. He just had success he couldn't have imagined having, but he also knows the guy who's in front of him, Carson Wentz, is as he described it, a stud. And the point you made is, why would he want to leave? Like, every, we all want him to leave because it's an interesting storyline. It's a fun yeah. discussion. Every, everybody wants to see the car crash. Yeah, I told the guy to go down that road. Then he crashed. He's like, <laughs> oh, I think he was a starter anyway. Because right. that's what's going to happen. All right. Well, moving on to the New York Giants. It was a tough season for Eli Manning. The Giants went 3-13. and 13. He was benched for a game. As a result, the G-Men have the number two pick and a chance to draft Eli's replacement. However, according to reports, there's a growing belief the Giants will pass on a quarterback in the first round. Nick, would it be crazy for the Giants not to draft a quarterback? Well, it depends on what their objectives are. Like in life, we always need to say, what are you trying to achieve? And if you're the New York Giants and your number one objective is to erase the memory of last season, to get back into the playoff picture, to potentially get back into the championship picture, then yeah, then draft Saquon Barkley. Then you could, you could then have one of the very best wide receivers in the league to go along with one of the very best running backs in the league. I don't know that Saquon would be that, but we've seen over the last few years, rookie running backs can come in and immediately be top flight running backs in the league. So if your objective is, let's make the playoffs as soon as possible, let's extend Eli's window as long as possible, then no, they wouldn't be crazy. It'd be the smart thing to do. But if Pat Shermer and Dave Gettleman's objective is long term, and to have a plan post-Eli, when Eli obviously is entering the final few years of his career, then I would say you have to take advantage of something you hope to not be in, have again anytime soon, which is a top two pick of the draft. Like, you hope that you're, you're not drafting in the top five or the top ten anytime soon. So this could be your opportunity to get the Eli era parent. So if they are thinking long-term, big picture, 
I definitely would take a quarterback. Doesn't mean I would trade Eli. Doesn't mean I'd cut Eli. I would maybe let him sit for a year behind Eli. But that, that's what I would do if I was worried about the next five to ten years. But if you're just worried about the next 16 games, then yeah, I suppose Saquon's your guy. Saquon Barkley, you believe he's going to be a star in the NFL? I do. I do. Okay. Do you, which quarterback then would you take with that pick that, that now because you said Barkley is going to be a star, I need you to be able to tell me this quarterback's going to be a star. Which quarterback would well, you I, take the, with that I, I don't think he has to be a star quarterback. I think he has to be, I mean, maybe we should define star, like a, what we'd call no, a franchise no, no. quarterback. No, no, no. Answer my question, because I want him to be a star, because it's New York City, and we know that Barkley is going to be a star. Like, we, uh, we qualify. We're, we're taking that as a given, that Barkley's going to be a star. I got yeah. you. You know, you know who my guy is, and it's a point of contention here, Josh Rosen. It's uh, not a point of contention. No, That's just your guy. Uh, like uh, J Josh Rosen. Like, them guys, are like, I don't care nothing about him. Okay. Like, if they do well in that, it's not going to matter to me one bit. So, so that's the answer. Yeah, I believe he's going to struggle in pro football, especially if he comes to the East Coast. He's never played anywhere cold, all right? I believe it's more important to have the running game going forward with Eli over the next three or four years with um, Odell Beckham Jr. because there is no future beside, beyond that. Gettleman, he just got fired in Carolina, all right? Pat Shermer, he got fired at his other coaching job, coaching the Browns. So you can't plan no long term. Like what what they've hired them for ownership is to get them turned around. As if they're close to being a playoff team. All right. They can't say they were a playoff team, but they were expecting to follow up last year with being in the playoffs two years in a row. They didn't get there. So now they have an overhaul. All right. I would go with the running back. I would use free agency to, to repair that offensive line. And the Giants will be right back in the playoff picture with double digit wins. The quarterback and all that situation, that's up for some, that's another question for another day. Like, how can we get back in the playoffs? And I believe Barkley gives them that. He's a phenomenal, not only forget runner between the tackles, but he has big playability. And you don't get that in a lot of running backs. He is a ready made receiver a mismatch like Le'Veon Bell that you can put outside at the receiver position and he can do business against a safety or against a linebacker. Special teams from day one. If they kick the ball off opening kickoff, he can return that, as I saw against Penn State versus Ohio State, and be an instant impact, you know, for a franchise. So I believe he's a can't miss um, at the number two. And if I'm the Giants, I draft him moving forward. What the, would the Giants' expectations be? Or, or what would you say would be realistic? Well, this is the, the Giants. Giants. The, Gi the Giants have never won without a running game. So if we talk about getting back to winning, like global warming has not hit New York City. All right. <laughs> it is February and it is still cold around here. Not today. Today It's going to be a beautiful day. But if they're the football giant, they got to get back to that. That defense has to live up to the expectations for the money that they were paid. And they got to get back to running the football because that will be the best thing for Odell Beckham. Make them crowd the line of scrimmage. Make them stop you from running the football. Here's what I know about the, just the drafts in general and the history of it. We can go through every single draft over the last 10 years. And with hindsight, with being able to look back on it, you know who the first pick of every single draft would be? The best quarterback that was in that draft. And if there were two good quarterbacks in that draft, Draft, you know who the second pick would be? The second best quarterback in that draft. If there is a good quarterback in the draft, or two good quarterbacks, they are more valuable than any other player, no matter how good they are. No matter if they are the best running back. Like the Ezekiel Elliott draft, he's, he's the best running back in football. But guess what? Carson Wentz would be the number one pick of that draft. Jared Goff would be the number two pick of that draft. If you have the hindsight to go back and do it. And so, if the Giants look at this and say, there are two or one in the Browns pass on quarterbacks. I think you have to take that opportunity. Now, if they don't believe in the quarterbacks, you don't reach on. Well, there's another argument, too. We saw that what happened to the Cowboys, they got their quarterback. When they were missing their running back, what happened to them? They were marginal as far as the team. So you need a running back to be a big-time team in the National Football League. And I believe the Giants, they have their guy, guy in Barkley. All right, we're going to take a break from NFL talk and get to the NBA because coming up, we wonder, is there a new team in the mix to land LeBron James? That's next on First Things First. Mystery team. I like the mystery team. The Big East NC Night.